Sabrina, I need you to leave my house right now. I've already signed the divorce papers, so sign your column and never show your face to me again. What? Are you okay? Why would we get divorced? I'm not signing anything. Oh, just shut up. If the king of the house tells you to do something, then you do it. I don't want to hear any excuses. Just sign the paper and leave my house. Well, at least tell me why you're saying all of this all of a sudden. I was just told that I'm becoming second in place to CEO of my company, which means that I'll have the money and power that I've always wanted. I can have any woman I wish to in the world, so why would I keep a dumb and clumsy wife like you? What? You're getting promoted? Yes. The current CEO called me into his office and told me himself. Apparently, he really liked my success in the projects that I've managed a while ago, and now I finally earned the position that I deserve. That's amazing! You've been working extra hard recently, you deserve it. I'm proud to be your wife. Not for long. Could you pack up your things and leave already? If you're so proud of me, then why don't you also feel that I deserve someone better than you? I've worked hard for so long to earn this position, but all of you done is stay home and do some housework, and enjoy life. I need someone who can help me become a better version of myself, and you're clearly not the person. How could you say that to me? I've done everything around the house all this time so you just you could focus on your work. And I'm the one who took care of your parents when you weren't there for them. I was the one that was by their side until the very last breath. We supported each other in our own ways and got this far. <laughs> Seriously? Do you think you deserve to say that you've worked as hard as me? Anyone could do what you did. What I did for my company is uncommon. That's how I climbed my way through the pyramid of capitalism and came this far. Your existence is irrelevant to my career. What? I've seen people like you before. They think they're all that because their husbands are prestigious members of society. But in reality, they have nothing to be proud of because they've done nothing. They're the type of people that I hate the most in this world. Now, could you please just sign the goddamn paper? My time is valuable, unlike yours. Tom, could we please just calm down and talk for a second? I'm not going to accept this and just sign papers and leave you alone. I don't care whether you accept this or not. This is reality, and if I tell you to get out of my house, then you get out. Hey, Mom. I heard from Dad that you two are getting divorced. He just straight up told you to leave the house, didn't he? <laughs> Isn't he unbelievable? He said that he doesn't need me anymore because he's getting promoted, even though I've worked so hard to support him all this time. <laughs> Do you really think that you deserve to say that? Come on. We all know that he'd replace you at some point. All you were to him was a maid, and he wants a wife, not a maid. Seriously? Well, I guess this is goodbye then, Mom. It was great knowing you, but make sure not to bother Dad anymore. He's too busy for you. Tori, do you agree with this whole thing? That your father and I should get a divorce? This isn't a joke, honey. Of course I agree. And no, I'm not coming with you. I'm going to stay with Dad and live the celebrity life like I've always wanted. So stop making it hard for all of us and just leave already. <laughs> I'm your mother. No, I agree with Dad. You're just someone who could have been replaced by a maid as soon as we wanted to. Unlike Dad, there's nothing to respect about you, and I think it's valid that you got kicked out. I mean, even your own daughter doesn't even want to stay with you, so that says a lot about the person that you are. That's no way to speak to your mother. You and your father have always been condescending towards me, but I believe that there was still something special between us. Well then, could you tell me what there is to respect about the person that you are? All you do is stay at home and do the same chores over and over again, every single day. I'd rather die than live the same boring life as you. <laughs> as a matter of fact, you're basically just a maid who lives in our house. <laughs> wow. You know, all I've done is try to provide for the two of you with an environment that you could thrive in. I woke up earlier and went to sleep later than everyone else. I used every single minute that I had for the two of you. Do you really think that that's something that anyone could do? I deserve the same amount of appreciation that I have for the two of you. Isn't it common sense for a maid to work hard for their master? 
Dad provides you with all of your living expenses, so you pay him back in labor. It makes total sense to me. Why should you be respected for doing something that obviously is your job? I clean the house spotlessly because of your father's dust allergies. Do you know how difficult it is to get every speck of dust in the house? I handmade all of your meals and snacks because of your egg, milk, and flour and shrimp allergies. I even took care of your father's parents until they passed away. Can you really say that it's obviously my job to do all that? Of course. <laughs> if anything, that's the bare minimum. Oh, really? If you really feel that way, then I guess there's nothing I can do to change your mind. I didn't know years of hard work and care could be disregarded so easily like this. I guess this is goodbye then. Yep. Well then, it was great knowing you, Mom. Thanks for all the work that you did for us until now. You won't have to worry about me and Dad. I'm sure we'll find someone who's a much better fit for our job compared to you. I'll be having the time of my life with Dad and my new mom. <laughs> Don't even think about coming back to beg for your place in our house, okay? Mom! I need you to come over to the hospital right now. Dad got into an accident. He's seriously injured and unconscious. An accident? Yes, I just got a call from the hospital a while ago. It seems like he got into a car accident. Apparently, he tried to drive himself home after drinking at a dinner party, but he ended up driving into a pole and got carried away by an ambulance. He's losing blood quickly and needs a blood donation. But his blood type is AB negative, and they don't have enough at the hospital, so they need a family member who's the same blood type to come over as soon as possible. Yes, I'm the same blood type as him. I'm surprised you remembered. Dad's life is in serious danger right now. You need to come right now. I'm heading to the hospital now, too, so I'll meet you there. I'm sorry to tell you, honey, but I can't go to the hospital. What? Why not? Dad might die if you don't come right now. You told me not to show my face to the two of you ever again. What? That's what you said to me when I and your father got divorced. You should call his new wife as soon as possible. Her husband is in serious danger right now. Are you serious? We don't have time for this nonsense right now, and he doesn't have a new wife. Oh, really? I thought he was going to find someone much better than me as soon as we got divorced. I mean, who wouldn't want to get married to him, right? There isn't anyone who fits the criteria. There was one lady who was pretty and graduated from a great school, but like every other girl, she ran away because it was too difficult to manage taking care of me and Dad. None of them have the grit to be worthy of being Dad's wife. Oh my, well, that's a shame. Look, we can talk about this later. Just come to the hospital already. We need to get you here now. If Dad dies right now, my life is over. We need to save him no matter what. Of course you won't be able to live your luxurious life if he dies, right? If you lose him, you won't be able to live a whole day. Well, then come over to the hospital. The only way to save him at this point is for you to come over and donate some blood. If you're my mother, if you're Dad's wife, then come over. I'm sorry, there must be a misunderstanding. All I am is your maid, aren't I? What? I see that this is an emergency, but I'm not your mother, and I'm not your father's wife. I'm just someone who used to be your maid. Therefore, I have no intention of coming over to save your father's life. What? Do you think this is time to be playing these games right now? A person's life is literally in your hands. If you were in my shoes, would you scramble over to the hospital to save your father? What do you mean? Would you be rushing over to the person who threw you away after telling you that you were useless and nothing special to them? Even my own daughter treated me like a maid and told me to leave. It's been a year, but my anger hasn't disappeared, honey. Why do my feelings never matter to the two of you? Why do I have to bottle up my anger and come save the two of you after you threw me away like that? Wait, you're that angry about us kicking you out of the house? Is that even a question? Why wouldn't I be? Anyone in their right mind would be furious for ages after what you two did to me. But Dad is still in a dangerous condition because of the accident. And even though you two are divorced, that doesn't change the fact that you were married until a year ago. You're not coming to save him after everything you've been through? The past doesn't mean anything. We've been divorced for a year and that makes us strangers. I do feel bad for him getting into an accident, but there's no responsibility or obligation that requires me to save him. Mom, you're not thinking straight. I get that the two of you have your differences, but he'll die if you don't come and help him right now. You two never came to help me when I needed the most. Why are you trying to make it seem like I'm the one in the wrong here? Well, look, I'm done talking to you. After being thrown away by my daughter and husband, I've survived for the past year with no one to rely on, all on my own. 
I have work after this today, so I'll be going now. Sabrina, you heartless little. I heard from Tori that you declined her request to give me a blood transplant. Hi! Looks like you're all better now since you're able to text me like this. Congratulations! See, you didn't even need the blood transplant from me since you're alive now. Don't you dare congratulate me, letting me die because we're a divorced couple. Are you insane? I won't forget this incident, and I will get back at you for this. If you want to be forgiven, then come over to the hospital and apologize right now, and take care of me while I'm hospitalized. Um, what? I'm alive, but my whole body hurts. I need help, doing everything, but I can't ask the nurse to stay by my side for the whole remainder of my stay at the hospital. So I need you to come over and take care of me. If you do a good job, then I'll forget that the blood transplant incident even happened. I don't want your forgiveness, so I'll be kindly declining your request. What? I mean, if you need someone to take care of you so badly, then why don't you call Tori over and make her do everything for you? Your adorable little daughter would do anything to protect you, wouldn't she? Of course I already called her over to take care of me. I'm only asking you because she's not showing up. Isn't that common sense? What? Even your daughter abandoned you. She's heartless. She has been able to live the luxurious life that she's always wanted in the past year. All because of me. But what does she do at the moment I get fired from my job? She abandons me. You got fired? After working so hard to get that promotion? It's all because of my stupid boss. That hard-headed old man can't accept that people make mistakes. He found out that my accident was caused by drunk driving. After that, he called me and told me to, over the phone that I'm fired no matter what the excuse. Oh, I mean, I get where he's coming from. He probably assumed that you weren't fit to take charge of an entire company if your morals are so unestablished. Regardless, if the media finds out about all this, that your company did nothing about it, it would affect the whole company's reputation. Whatever. I don't care about that stupid company anyways. This is me we're talking about here. I'm sure that I'll have tons of offers to choose from in a few weeks. And in order to start off my new career strong, I need to heal as quickly as possible. So come take care of me! I won't be able to give my top performance with a body like this. And why on earth would I go? If you need someone obedient enough to take care of you, then why don't you just hire a maid? It's not a good time for me to be spending that unnecessary money. Even though we're divorced, it's your job to take care of your ex-husband if he's in dire need of it. You know, I might even consider getting back together with you, depending on how well you perform on this occasion. <laughs> You can stop with that nonsense already. Who would ever want to get remarried to you? I have a wedding to attend after this anyways. What? Who's getting married? I'm getting married. With the person that I've been dating. After the wedding, we'll be turning in our wedding certificate. What? You're joking, right? We've just split. What do you mean you're getting married already? What do you mean we've just split? It's been a year since we got divorced. Right after we got divorced, my friends introduced me to a bunch of men because they all believed that I deserved someone better than you. Really? Yes. Ever since we've been dating, I'd been telling him about how I was treated. That you and Tori would treat me like a maid no matter how much I cared for the two of you. So all my friends knew how trashy of a husband you were. That's why right after we got divorced, my friends all got together and tried to introduce me to better men than you. What? And you're getting married to one of those men? Yes, I ended up meeting someone who cared for me and loves me like no one ever else has. And he's never once looked down on me like you did. And he thanks me for every single thing that I do for him. He's someone who treats me as an equal and I love him. But... So you're not coming over to take care of me? Of course not. I have a new family that I plan to give my everything to. This is goodbye. I have a wedding to go host, so I need to go. Mom! I heard from Dad. You got remarried, right? Yes, I'm enjoying my new life with my new family. That's not fair. How come you get to have a nice family? I heard that your new husband is a lawyer. He's one of the top lawyers in the state, right? 
Wow, where did you get all that information? I have my sources. Anyway, I have a suggestion to make. Would you like me to come live with you again? I'll make sure to treat your new husband well. What? You have your father to take care of. Why would you want to live with me? Besides, what makes you change your mind about me not deserving to live with the two of you? There's nothing between me and dad anymore. I can't handle him anymore. He's so annoying. What do you mean? I thought you loved him. Yeah, I loved him when he was his respectable self. Now all he does is text me 24-7 with a bunch of requests. Like, I need you to come over and give me a massage. My back hurts. Or, the food here is absolutely horrible. Make some dinner and bring it over to the hospital. Don't get me wrong. I'd love to be nice to an injured person, but he's so demanding and annoying and I can't take it anymore. Wow, I guess that part of him hasn't changed a bit. And did you know that Dad got fired from his job? How can he be so entitled when he doesn't even work? And I haven't told him yet, but the doctors have told me that he might be stuck in a wheelchair for the rest of his life. What? Really? Apparently, he would be able to walk again with the right rehabilitation, but the doctor said that the patient himself needs to take a strong initiative on the matter, and that Dad doesn't seem like the type to be able to stick with the program. Dad doesn't learn how to walk again, then I'm the one who has to take care of him for the rest of his life, right? I can't waste my life under a rock taking care of my crippled dad, so I need to run away and become your daughter. It's doable, isn't it? What? Aren't you glad you're going to be able to live with your beloved daughter again? I'll be the best child you could ever wish for, and I'll do everything that you need me to do. And I'll get along super well with my new dad, so can you please live with me again? Sorry, but I don't have a daughter anymore, so I don't know what you're talking about. Um, what do you mean? I've never had a daughter since the day that I got divorced a year ago. I don't have a beloved daughter, and I have no idea what you're talking about. Therefore, no, I don't want to live with a stranger like you. Are you serious? Did you really just say that to your own daughter? No matter whether you got divorced from dad or live apart from me for a year, I'm still your daughter. Don't tell me that you don't know what I'm talking about. You should stop changing your stance every time you're placed at a disadvantage. When me and your father were about to get divorced, you never tried to stop it from happening. You teamed up with your father and kicked me out of the house together. Do you even know how many days I spent caring for the two of you just to get laughed at? Not once have I forgotten about what the two of you did to me. Well, I mean, I can explain. I don't need an explanation. You showed how much you really cared for me a year ago, and that's the only explanation that I need. Never living with the two of you ever again. Mom, just listen! Be quiet. It's my turn to tell the two of you. Don't ever show your faces to me again. I don't need the two of you in my life anymore. <laughs> After that incident, I heard that Tom started treating the nurses like his maids and verbally harassed them, leading to him getting kicked out of the hospital earlier than planned. On top of that, contrary to his hope, he never received offerings from companies, and Tom is now begging his old boss to hire him again. But the only answer he gets is that he's good at working but has no morals, and that he is not fit to manage others who are going to follow in his footsteps. My previous daughter Tori is now taking care of her father who's now stuck in a wheelchair for life. No matter how much she helps her father, she never receives appreciation, and is even getting harassed for no reason, because her father is stressed from not getting a job. Hi Rachel, do you have a second? Your brother and I have something to tell you. Hey, Katie, of course. What is it? Mark and I are having a baby. I'm three months pregnant now. What? Oh my gosh. Congratulations. We better throw a baby shower soon then. Oh, we're fine. Thank you. I'm sure we'd be better off planning and celebrating for ourselves than leaving it to you. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, what? I didn't reach out to you just to let you know that I was pregnant. I actually had a very important favor to ask of you. Once the baby in my belly is born, I'd like to ask you to never show yourself in front of us again. I need to make sure that our child doesn't grow up seeing you as a role model. Are you serious? So you're suggesting that we stop being family? Yes! I'm never going to get to see the two of you or the baby. Exactly. I'm sorry, it's been very difficult being around a high school graduate lowlife myself. And it's even more out of the question to be forcing my own child to be around one. So I'll be maintaining a good distance with you from now on. Wow, just wow. And before you even ask, yes, Mark 100% agrees with this. You know, I would even go as far as to say that he was the one who came up with the whole idea in the first place. 
that we should distance ourselves from you since you're a high school graduate. I'm glad that the two of us have felt the same way about this matter. <laughs> you two have always treated me like this. You know that I wanted to go to college too. I had no choice but to start work because that's what our family needed. The company that your parents were running went out of business, right? I've heard that you were all struggling to get by for a while. Our parents were able to find different jobs after that and worked for years. That's the only reason why Mark was able to go to college, unlike me. Are you still going to make fun of me while knowing all of that? I mean, I do feel bad for you, but then again, a high school graduate is a high school graduate, and that's that. Society won't take into account why your educational background is the way it is. Seriously. Through my educated eyes, you people are all the same. And it hurts my eyes when I have to watch you uneducated people make all of these excuses as to why you were unable to get a proper education. It really brings out your lack of dignity. Why is it that the worse the educational background, the more excuses people have? I would never make an excuse if I was in your shoes. So what you're trying to say is, regardless of what I say, the words that come out of my mouth are still those of a high school graduate, so you don't care. Whatever, I get what you're trying to tell me. If that's what you want, then I won't show myself in front of the two of you ever again after your child is born. I was scared that you wouldn't understand me, so I'm glad you do. I'll be headed then. Goodbye! Rachel, guess what? I now live in an apartment in the middle of the city inside a skyscraper. I'm officially on top of the world. Oh, wow, that's great. Did you two decide to move in preparation to welcome the child? Yeah, I read that the location at which you live significantly affects the child's educational outcome. I mean, you can see that it's true from me and Katie. We both grew up in the city, and now we're both graduates from prestigious universities, and work at mega companies. I'm sure our child is going to turn out as bright as the two of us, so we better make sure their environment doesn't drag them down. <laughs> I agree. I think it's important for a parent to prioritize education. I've also read that the location the child grows up greatly affects their drive towards achieving well in school. Exactly! <laughs> I mean, it's common sense that if you live with idiots, then you'll become one yourself. And in order to avoid that from happening, Kitty and I are raising our child in the best and brightest environment that we could provide. That's great. Your apartment must really be amazing. Yeah, it's the type of place that someone with an educational background like you could only dream of. <laughs> I've heard rumors of celebrities living there, and apparently, it even houses CEOs and managers from all kinds of big companies. That's why the school that's built nearby is one of the best in the state. Wow, the rent must really be expensive. Yeah, the room itself is also really luxurious too. It's pretty spacious and has a great view. <laughs> Sorry to show off like this, but I'm sure you can live somewhere like this if you can go ahead and graduate from college. It probably isn't too late. In fact, I'll invite you over so you can take a look. You're inviting me over? I thought you hated people who aren't graduated from a nice college. Why would you invite me to your house? As you've heard from Katie, you'll never see her or me again once our child is born. So I thought it would be nice to have a chance to say our last goodbye. <laughs> And also, you'll probably never get the chance again. So I thought it would be a kind act to let you come over. I'll even let you take pictures to hang on your wall once you go home. You know what? I'd love to go. I'm genuinely curious to see what type of luxurious place you'll be living in, so thank you for inviting me. Of course! As the French once said, Noblesse oblige. Let us nobles be empathetic for the poor. You know, Katie and I's total annual income has just exceeded $200,000. <laughs> it sounds like a dream even to me. I'll show you a view that you'll never be able to forget. Hello, Rachel. Thank you for coming over today. I always thought that the poor people never had the time or mental space to be wasting their time. But I guess I was wrong. Thank you for making time for us in your busy schedule. <laughs> Do you never get bored of making fun of me? And you have something to say to me before anything else, don't you? What the hell was that? Why would you throw coins at me when I was leaving? I mean, you brought some gifts with you as congratulations for moving in, didn't you? Well, I was raised to always give back for anything given. We're never seeing each other again, so I thought it would be a good idea to give back to you right there on the spot. Give back. 
Do you consider throwing coins at me as giving back to me? Oh my, do you not? I thought that the cheap looking flowers in the vase that you brought today were worth a few dollars. If I'm giving back something of the same value, then I thought a few coins would fit for that. How could you say that? You know, I've always expected you to be poor, but I never expected you to be this poor. I mean, who brings that kind of obviously cheap thing as a gift for others? Those flowers that you gave me made me sure of my theory. People who aren't educated properly have no choice but to become poor. I'd like to thank you for making me reassure myself that I'll never make my children become like you. I chose my present myself, just for the two of you. I heard that you two were moving into a nice apartment, so I thought some flowers and a nice vase would bring the whole interior together. That vase is an artwork that was made by a famous potter. I won't tell you the price because it's a gift, but it's a very nice gift and you should appreciate it. Whatever. <laughs> you don't have to try so hard to make yourself seem like something that you're not. Through the educated eyes of my husband and I, we can obviously tell that this vase isn't worth anything more than a few dollars. <laughs> Did you get it at Dollar Tree? Wait, let me guess. You just made it yourself so that you wouldn't have to spend money, didn't you? <laughs> Seriously. However you got it, it doesn't matter anymore. I'm sorry, but my husband and I have already thrown away the flowers and the vase that you bought today. I see that you chose it yourself. But it just emits some sort of poor, malicious energy that we couldn't take. There was no other choice. I'm sorry. <laughs> How rude of you. All I wanted to do was congratulate you on beginning a new chapter. And this is what you do in return? I've already gotten used to you making fun of my educational background, but this is just purely heartless of you. I can't take this anymore. Well, then it's great timing, isn't it? We're never going to see each other again. So you can hate us all you want. You'll never have to see us again, and we'll never have to see you either. I mean, I hope so. But I have a feeling that I'm going to have to see you again. What are you talking about? There's no way we're ever wasting another minute talking to you. <laughs> we're officially strangers now, which means that you'll never be stepping foot in our house either. What a bummer. I'm glad that you at least got to see what a nice house meant for educated and rich people looks like. Um, I'm sorry to break it to you, but I own this building. What? It's true that a lot of people who live here have great educational backgrounds, but it's not like I made that a rule as the owner. I don't care about where you came from as long as you're able to pay the rent. And I don't appreciate how you feel entitled enough to make the rules around here when I literally make them myself. I get that you're mad, but making obvious lies doesn't help your situation, honey. Whether you believe it or not, I own this building and that's all there is to it. The room that you showed to me as if you owned the whole world, that room is mine and you're paying me to live in it. If you don't believe me, come on over to the top floor. You'll see the whole floor is my house. The whole top floor? You two look so dumb when you were telling me that I'd never live in a, such a nice place. Every cent that you spend to live here comes to me for God's sake. Are you kidding? How is that possible? In what world would a high school graduate own a building like this? You're lying to feel better about yourself, aren't you? You can even look at the papers that you signed to finalize the moving in process. You'll see that the room is under my name. Really? I don't care what you want to believe, but if you're going to keep trying to believe that I'm lying, then take a look at it and then bother me. I'll be going then. I'm still furious at the two of you. The coins that you threw at me will be going to donation, by the way. Rachel, answer the phone right now. How on earth did you end up owning a building like this? This is impossible. Looks like you finally took a proper look at the papers. How did you not notice anything when you were signing them, for God's sakes? Even if they had the same name as you, I never thought it would be you. I just thought you had the same name as the owner by coincidence. I mean, who would think that it's their high school graduate sister that owns this place? You're supposed to be a poor lowlife. Yes, I would be a poor lowlife if I hadn't worked as hard as I did. What? No matter how much the two of you would harass me, I stayed focused on my work and brought myself to this position. After paying off our parents' debt, I earned countless certificates to qualify for all kinds of jobs. One of the many jobs that I'd experienced was caretaking. On that job, I ended up working as a caretaker for a wealthy madam who worked alone in her mansion. At a mansion? Yes, I got sent there by coincidence at first, but she really liked the way I did things. She ended up scouting me to work for her personally, so I left my company and worked as her personal caretaker. What kind of fairytale scenario is that? 
I took very good care of her until she passed away years later. In the end, it turned out that she left all of her inheritance under my name. And you're saying that this building was part of that inheritance? Yes, this is one of the many buildings and apartments that she left behind for me. What the hell? All you had to do was take care of some rich old lady for a few years and you got all of that? That's not supposed to happen in real life. Well, it did, and now I'm the owner of the apartment that you live in. The madam told me that she had to struggle quite a bit when she was younger, and that she was the same as me, a high school graduate. Because of that, her marriage got cancelled and she was harassed at her workplace for years. She said I reminded her of herself. The old lady never went to college either? Isn't it amazing? No matter what the odds or what anyone else said to her, she still kept working towards her goals. In the end, she became the queen of real estate in this area. I mean, she was rich enough to hire a personal caretaker, so that says a lot about her wealth. I earned tons and gained a lot of inspiration in the last few years that I was by her side. But why on earth would you hide that all from me? Not even mom or dad know that you have this much wealth, do they? Of course mom and dad know everything about this. They were the first people that I told. Really? Yeah, I even suggested that they started living with me, but they said they're going to pass on the offer. That they were glad I was happy, and that, and that they want me to live my own life, since they took so much away from me when I was young. Then why didn't you tell me too? Why did you think that I would even think about telling you? <laughs> do you not remember how many times you made fun of me for not having gone to college? I'm not bored enough to deal with you. Anyways, when are you planning to leave your apartment? I hope you're already beginning to pack your things up. What do you mean? Why would we move out? We just moved here. You wouldn't want to live in an apartment owned by a high school graduate, would you? I mean, solely judging by the way you and your wife persistently harassed me for years about my educational background, of course. Seems only logical that you move out to avoid paying such a person for living. Or do you plan on continuing to live in my apartment? Because if that's the case, then you probably won't be able to achieve your goal of never letting your baby see me. And besides, your pride as an elite probably couldn't handle the fact that someone below you is literally living on top of you, could you? I don't believe this. I'm supposed to be the successful one out of the two of us. But even if it's below you, this room is still something that I worked hard to earn. And I paid tons of initial fees. I just can't move out right away. I even invited some friends to come check it out. I can't back out now. Whatever, I don't care whether you keep living here or move out. As the owner of your room, the only thing I care about is that you pay me your rent. Well then, it's good doing business with you. Hey Rachel, I just have a quick question if you don't mind. Do you think you could give us a discount on the rent as the owner? Or could you possibly move us to a higher floor for the same amount of rent? <laughs> is that even a real question? No, I won't allow either of those things. Come on, Rachel, aren't we sisters? I'm sure you could work something out for us. Please? How many personalities do you have? Do you think I'm just going to forget about the evil stepsister that harassed me for years? I finally had an epiphany. It's just wrong and stupid to make fun of people for their educational background. You couldn't possibly measure a person's worth with such a superficial trait. I'll apologize for every single thing I've done and said that offended you, so let's start over as besties. Seriously. Yes, aren't you glad to finally have the loving little sister that you always wanted? We should go and have some tea together sometime. I'm pregnant, but I'm still doing well enough to go out on my own. If you're so bored, then why don't you just go get a proper job? I'm sure your college degree would get you a decent job. Maybe you'll finally be able to quit your part-time job. Um, what? I hate to break it to you, but I know everything about you two. As the owner, I have the right to check your annual income. You two have been telling me that you're elites who work for mega companies. 200,000 a year. Why the hell would you lie about that? I know that you two only make 60,000 a year combined and you only have a part-time job. How? Where did you find out? I found out when the two of you tried to move in. I heard that the real estate company declined the two of you because of your annual salaries and that you two were making excuses that you'd just been fired recently and that you'd been making 200,000 a year until last year. Mark promised that he would be promoted and would make as much as he used to right away, right? And that you'd get a proper job as soon as you could. How do you know the exact lines of our conversation? You even showed them your student IDs from college, right? Do you really think student IDs from years ago mean anything at all in the real world? How? 
The real estate agency contacted me right away. <laughs> And I said you can move in since it's all up to me in the end. All because I cut you some slack as your older sister. Really? But what do you do in return? Try to negotiate prices and pay less. I don't think I've ever met anyone as greedy as you. If you have time to be negotiating prices with me, then why don't you find a job? As you promised, go ahead and show that you're an elite. Of course, that's exactly what I'm planning on doing. It's just that I'm pregnant right now. And I heard that Mark isn't doing too well at his workplace either. Look, I don't care about the reason why you two ended up getting fired from your previous jobs. But you better keep every single promise that you made at the office. If you even make one delayed payment, you're out. Isn't that a bit harsh? I think it's great that you two care enough about your child to move just to give them a good learning environment. But biting off more than you can chew is never a good idea. I heard the preschools around here cost tens of thousands per year, and that's just the beginning. Kids cost more and more as they get older. What? Preschools here cost that much? Um, did you not look up the living expenses around here before moving in? I mean, we just thought that the living in the city would be enough. Breathing the same air and seeing the same sights as smart people is important in raising a smart child, right? Living in a nice environment won't automatically make your kids smarter. Isn't that common sense? I think the two of you should have a nice, long talk about the future, compare your income with the living expenses around here, and come back to me with an answer. Because things won't always go your way just because you went to a nice university. I found out later on, but the reason that the two of them got fired from their jobs in the first place was simply because they were bad at what they did. They would go around harassing people who didn't go to nice schools like them, but wouldn't do much work either and ended up getting fired. After a conversation, the two properly compared their earnings with their expenses. Told me later that week that they would give up their dream apartment. After that, I heard that they moved into a cheaper apartment. Sometimes I receive texts from Katie asking me to support her child's educational fees. And that they want to make their kids get into the top schools in the nation. But I just send pictures of the view from my apartment in response. Mom, where are you? Me and Dad are really hungry. Can you make dinner? Sorry, honey, I'm at the hospital right now. The doctor just told me that I'm going to have to be hospitalized starting today. What? Why? I broke my arm. It's completely shattered and they told me that I won't be able to move around for a while. You broke your arm? Doing what? How could you, a stay-at-home wife, break your arm? You know, half of this is your fault. What do you mean it's my fault? You shattered a glass cup this morning, didn't you? You know, my favorite cup? Oh yeah, it slipped right on my hand. I forgot to tell you. You know, water got all over my school uniform and I had to dry it off before going to school. I was almost late because of that. Well, why didn't you clean it up afterward? I stepped on a shard of glass that you left on the floor and cut my foot. Really? Yes, do you know how dangerous it is to leave a whole floor full of glass shards? But I mean, it is your job to clean up those things. You're a stay-at-home mom. So you have to do all of the housework for me and dad. What did you just say? And what do you plan to do when I try to clean it up after and I accidentally cut my finger or something? Are you going to watch your precious daughter get hurt like that? So you want me to cut up the bottom of my foot instead? I didn't expect there to be glass, so I stepped directly onto a pool of glass. That I jumped back because it hurt so much and your father's skateboard was right there. Ended up falling down the whole flight of stairs. You both caused this injury. <laughs> wow, do you have it on tape? I'm sure it would go viral if we post it on social media. <laughs> Stop laughing. I'm injured because of you. I'm in a hospital for God's sakes. Come on, Mom. Don't blame it all on us. You're the one who is too clumsy to stay on your feet. Who shatters their arm because of a stupid reason like that? <laughs> what do you mean? And you're overreacting. Why would you need to be hospitalized because of a broken bone? <laughs> Just come home already. I'm hungry. Your adorable daughter is waiting for her supper. You're going to make me cook with a right arm like this. Why don't you at least act like you're worried for me? Whatever. I'm done arguing with you. We'll order some delivery. I'll make sure to keep the receipt, so make sure to pay me after you come home. You can stay there for tonight, but come home by tomorrow night so you can cook. 
Sarah, where the hell are you? It's been three days already. Come home and do the housework right now. Do you really think a broken bone is going to fix itself in three days? I'm not going to be home for another few months. I did some blood work and the doctor told me that some numbers are off due to overworking. They said that I'll need to stay in the hospital for about another month. What? Do you think you could just abandon the house for a whole month? I do my job by paying the bills in this household. You do yours. I don't want to hear any excuses. Get your butt home right now. I'm not making excuses. I'm just telling you what the doctor said that I needed to do. I can't leave until I know that I'm all better, so could you please do the housework while I'm gone? You shut your mouth. The house is getting dirtier by the minute, and the laundry isn't going to wash itself. Do whatever you need to convince the doctor, and come home this instant. Are you hearing yourself? You're not a baby, Charles. You know how to do the laundry, and I'm too injured to move. What did you just say to me? Did you just call me a child? After everything I do for you, you act like that to me. Can't you show a bit of respect for your man? Is time to heal my injuries really too much to ask for? I even told you multiple times that I needed you to put your skateboard away because someone was going to trip on it. But you ignored me when I asked you, and here I am with a broken leg. It's not my fault that I'm stuck in a hospital bed, honey. Shut up. You live off my hard-earned money. And if you want to leave the house and get hospitalized, then why don't you teach your daughter how to do the housework? She doesn't know how to do crap around the house. Do your job as a mother and a wife. Why are you blaming me for our daughter not knowing how to do chores? I tried to teach her multiple times and you stopped me. Oh wow, it's my fault? Yes, it is! I tried to teach our daughter and you told me not to slack off by making our daughter do the housework. Thanks to that, she started treating me like a maid. It's your fault that she turned out to be incapable of doing these things on her own. I don't remember saying any of that to you or her. Stop blaming me for your own incapabilities as a mother. And here you are blaming me for something that isn't my fault again. Why don't you take this time as an opportunity to learn how to do the housework? That way, if an emergency like this ever happens again, you'll know what to do. You two need to become competent and at least sustaining your lives without me for a week. Are you serious? Why the hell would I have to do that? My job is to earn money so that everyone can live a happy life, and this is yours. There wouldn't be anything to argue about if you would just come home and do your job already. Are you trying to tell me that you want me to do all the housework that I usually do with a broken arm and a cut up foot? That's exactly what I'm telling you to do. Wake up before the man of the house and go to sleep after him. That's how things should be. Scrub the floors until I can see my reflection on them. And I swear, if you try to slack off even a bit, don't forget to take care of the garden too. I don't want any vegetables other than the homemade organic ones. You signed up for this when you married me, so you better get the job done. I barely get by doing all of those things when I'm healthy. Do you really think that there's even the slightest possibility that I'll be able to manage to do everything as usual with injuries like this? I'm done talking with you. If you can't come home today, come home as soon as possible. And if you keep wasting my time with your nonsense, don't expect to have a home to come back to. Charles, what the hell is this? I just got home from the hospital. Why are there divorce papers on the dining table? Oh, you're finally home. Well, I need you to sign those papers and turn them in for me. Me and Lisa are already living in a different house. You haven't answered my question. I asked why. Why would I need to sign these papers? I warned you a month ago that if you don't come back from the hospital as soon as possible, then you won't have a home to come back to. Wait, so you're telling me that you want to get divorced because I was hospitalized for a month? Yes, that's exactly what I'm telling you. I would have reconsidered it if you had come home right away after I warned you. But you chose to stay in a hospital. So this is what you get. I don't need a wife who leaves her family for a whole month while they're struggling without her. I was only gone for one month. What kind of nonsense is this? And what gives you the right to take our daughter with you? Please just shut up. I already have an idea of who I'm going to marry next. So I don't need you anymore. She's waiting for me to propose to her. So hurry up and sign the papers already. I don't need you anymore. Wait, what do you mean you have an idea who you're marrying next. During the month that you weren't there, Lisa and I had a discussion and came to a conclusion. 
that we don't need a wife and a mother who can't even do her job. So we decided we should get started on finding a new one. <laughs> what the hell? And we actually found the perfect one. A mother and a wife who's younger and prettier than you. Who we don't have to worry about leaving to get hospitalized. <laughs> she's also better than you at doing housework. Even Lisa said that she's happy to have a mother who's so beautiful and perfect. She even calls her mom now. The three of us are already living together in our new house. You've got to be kidding me. You cheated on me while I was hospitalized because I got injured? And now you just replace me with her like I never existed? Oh, come on. Don't get so worked up. <laughs> the only reason that we had to resort to this is because you abandoned us first. You basically set me up to cheat on you. What do you mean? Look, the only person to have to blame for all of this is yourself. You chose not to do the housework that you're supposed to do, and you lost your job. I don't think anyone will be willing to take in someone like you, but good luck finding a place to stay at. Whatever, I never planned on coming home anyways. What? I understand what you two have to say. Alright then, I'll sign the papers and turn them in right now. Really? I thought you would be a bit more unwilling. Isn't this where you're supposed to beg me not to leave you? I told you, I never planned to go home anyways. Why would I ever want to go back to being harassed by two idiots like you? I was going to bring up divorce when I got home anyways. This just saves me time. I just finished signing the papers, so I'll go turn them in right now. What? What do you mean you were planning on bringing up the divorce when you came home? You're saying that you would have divorced me anyways? Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. Why? What do you mean by why? I don't need a husband who attacks his own wife for getting injured. I had a lot of time to think about everything alone, and I came to this conclusion. That's why I would have brought it up as soon as I came home anyways. What? Yeah, but you saved me the hassle of convincing you, so thank you. Oh, and also, thank you for leaving proof that you were cheating on me. I'll be suing you for this, which means more money for me. Compensations on top of half of your assets. I'm gonna be so rich after this. <laughs> what do you mean you'll be suing me? It's not like I wanted to cheat on you. I only cheated on you because you left me alone for a whole month. You'll never be able to convince the judge that it's worth compensation. You're joking, right? Do you think you'll win this case because the reason you cheated was I was left for a month to fix a broken bone? Are you stupid? No matter what the reason, cheating is still cheating. I'll be sure to collect every single penny from you. And if you still have anything to say, make sure to contact me through my lawyer. I'll be hiring one to sue you on this case. You're hiring a lawyer? Of course I am. I never want to see you again, even for this procedure. I just took a look around, but this dirty house is full of evidence you're cheating. What? You have a habit of sticking receipts into your pocket instead of throwing them away, don't you? Oh my, you two must have had an amazing time at a nice restaurant. And a hotel, already. Well, I'll be handing all of these to my lawyer, so good luck getting away with this. Come on, Sarah. Oh, and you left your watch collection here, too. I'll be sure to take good care of it all. <laughs> Wait, no. I didn't leave it there intentionally. I just couldn't find any of my watches because the house was so messy. Of course you couldn't. I always cleaned up after the two of you. How can someone like you have possibly found anything in this mess of a house? Give them back to me right now. I bought all of those with my own money. They're mine. No, Charles. They're our shared asset. Which means they're also mine. I won't be returning them until the court case is over, and what I get is ruled. What? Well, that's that. And make sure to tell me where your new address is later. I'll send my lawyer right away and we'll have a meeting about everything. Shut up! I'll never tell you. Well, then I guess I'll keep these watches that are worth years of your hard work. I can't wait to put them up for auction and see how high they'll go. What? If you want to keep at least half of it instead of losing it all, then send me your new address. Mom! What did you do? Why is so much of Dad's savings gone? He told me when we left the house that he had well over $100,000 in savings. Sorry, honey. Over half of everything that he used to have is mine now because we got divorced and he cheated on me in the process. I'm sure your father's struggling to get by now, but I wish the three of you a happy life together. How are we supposed to live
live a happy life with barely enough for anything. Dad even said that he got demoted at work, and now we barely have any savings. I had to give up on my dream college because we didn't have enough money left to pay for the tuition. Oh no, your father got demoted at work? Stop acting surprised when you're the one who was behind it. You leaked that he cheated on you to his company. He was forced to be demoted because of you. I mean, he did what he did, so what's so wrong with telling the truth? Who would have thought that the woman he cheated on me with was a co-worker at work? None of that would have happened if she had just given in and paid her portion of the compensation. She kept ignoring my calls and letters, so I had no choice but to reach out to her company. I hate you. Dad got demoted and Molly got fired because of you. Oh wow, I didn't know that the other woman was fired. But look on the bright side, you always wanted an obedient housewife who you could treat like a maid. I don't need a maid who doesn't know how to do anything around the house. I can't believe how useless she is. What? I heard that she was great at cooking and that she was beautiful. That was all a lie. She doesn't know how to cook a single dish. She just bought things from the store and acted like she cooked for us. We thought that she was good at cleaning, but it turned out that she was just stuffing everything into a closet. She's not nearly as good at cleaning and cooking as you, Mom. Oh, really? Yeah, so I decided that I want to live with you instead of Dad. I don't want to spend another day with him and Molly. It's driving me crazy. What? Yeah, and it's a good deal on your part, too, because you can make him pay child support to you. You're greedy enough to take him for more than half of everything from Dad. <laughs> He'll take me in to get paid even more, right? Why would I take you in? And you can stop calling me Mom. Call me Sarah from now on. What? I don't want a daughter who won't even worry about me when I'm being hospitalized after getting injured. I changed the keys to all the locks. You won't be able to come inside anymore. What do you mean you don't want me? I'm your own daughter. You treated your own mother in a way that made her not want to take you in. This is all your own fault. Farewell, Lisa. Hey, Sarah. I was wondering, is there any chance that we could get back together? What? You heard everything from Lisa already, haven't you? Molly tricked us into thinking she could replace you, but it was all a lie, and she wasn't even close to what we thought she was. And we both realized how important you were to us. Too late. I've no intention of becoming a family with the two of you anymore. Even if you were going to break up with Molly, you're going to have to live alone with Lisa from now on. Come on, don't be like that. It's been a while since we split. Aren't you starting to realize how difficult it is to live all on your own? What? Yeah, I mean, you're probably struggling to find a job with a resume like that, aren't you? The only workplace experience that you have is kitchen. <laughs> no matter how much money you took from me, you can't go on unemployed forever, can you? I got demoted, but I still have a strong feeling that I can make it back up that ladder. My company just put me in as a member of a big project. I'm sure they'll promote me again if this goes well. Congratulations on that. But you don't have to worry about me. I've already found a new job for myself and I'm not struggling to get by at all. What? You already found a job? Yeah, I work as a maid now. I can use my knowledge and skills in a workplace like this. Oh, so you're a maid now. <laughs> so you are barely getting by, right? Well, then you don't have to act tough. I get it. You have a job. Can we just get back together? I'm not acting tough at all. I get paid a salary and tips, so I make about $2,500 a month. $2,500? You make the same amount as me! Oh, that's how much you make now? Why would a maid be paid so much each month? All you do is cook and clean, right? That's not fair. I mean, the customers want a maid who can do the job really well that badly. And they're all people who've been through hard times and understand how difficult it is to do things like scrubbing floors. That's why they're generous with the amount they pay me. Really? Yes, I clean a mansion every day and it's amazing. They liked how I did my job, so they made me their personal maid. I've been told that if I keep up the good work, they plan to give me raises periodically. It's like my dream come true. But... Of course I won't get full of myself and will study and get some certificates so that I can find another job whenever things go sideways. Anyways, I'm doing amazingly on my own so you have nothing to worry about. I'll never ever get back together with you. <laughs> do you hate us that much? Yes, but I do hope that you and your new family get along well. After all, she's the reason you were able to realize how important I was to you, so treat her well. 
Well then, let's both enjoy the new chapters of our lives. <laughs> After that, neither my daughter nor ex-husband ever reached out to me again. However, I heard rumors that the new wife is still horrible at housework. Apparently, the only meals that they ever have together are bought food. As a result, Charles was diagnosed with diabetes and is now spending his days in a hospital. Lisa's been acting like a victim towards her friends at school, but nobody looked convinced since she would always say condescending things about me even at school. They even concluded that she harassed me so badly that I had to leave and that they didn't want to be friends with her anymore. I've had enough out of you. I never want you to get near my brother again, got it? He might not be able to see it, but it's obvious to me that you're just after him for his money. I won't allow you to marry him. Just get out of his life. If you don't, I will dump a bucket of water over you. You're going to dump water on me? What are you, five years old or something? We're adults. Why can't we just talk this through with each other? And just what would I even have to talk with you? Listen to me. I am not after Mark's money at all, okay? I love him for who he is, and that is the start and end of it. <laughs> and besides, you already dumped water on me when I went over to meet your parents. Is that all you know how to do? <laughs> oh please, you think I'm going to buy that you're not in this for money crap? Why else would you be marrying a man who is a whole 10 years older than you? Did you really think that I was going to fall for that? And just what is that supposed to mean? I mean, I'm a woman. I know what it means when we fall in love with older men. And especially someone who is so much older than us. This is clearly nothing more than a money grab and that's that. I really don't think all women think like that. If anything, that says way more about you than it does about me. I don't care about age. Mark and I are both adults, and we love each other, and that should be enough. Why won't you listen to what I'm trying to tell you? Why would I ever listen to a lying woman who is just trying to rob my brother blind? This is pointless. Just stay away from my brother, okay? And quit trying to give me more lame excuses. But that's not even what I'm going. You know... I think it's women like you that I hate most in this world. That is to say, young women in the 20s who think that they have it all figured out. Don't you realize that you're ruining the dating pool for us women in the 30s? You need to stick to your dating pool, you. You gold digger. What did you just call me? I called you a gold digger. And what are you going to do about it? Not only are you that, but you're also conniving and sneaky, and you'll end up ruining my brother's life. I can't let you sink your claws into him and take him down. I'm trying to tell you that that is not what's going on here at all. Listen to me. I know my brother much better than you do, and I know for a fact that he's always been a shy, withdrawn person ever since he was little. I mean, he could hardly even function if I wasn't around him to be there for him. But then, he had to go and find a girlfriend. Not only that, but he went to propose to this girl too. Well, of course, when I heard the news, I was overjoyed as his older sister, until I realized the type of woman that he had fallen in love with. Ever since, I've just been wallowing in my disappointment. Well, I'm sorry to say, but I'm quite disappointed about things as well. Mark always talks so highly of you, and I was really looking forward to getting to meet you. But now, I see that you're just stubborn and judgmental. And just how am I either of those things, huh? I don't know what you're talking about at all. But I do. And I know that all you're after is my brother's money. And don't deny it both. I already know that I'm absolutely right about this. And maybe you'll learn when you're more mature. What are you talking about? How am I not mature? <clears throat> You young people always get so upset quickly just from hearing what you don't want to hear. Now I know for sure that I can't let you and my brother end up with a little girl like you. A little girl? Are you kidding me right now? <laughs> I understand that you are Mark's sister, but I am seriously losing my patience with you. Why are you being so mean to me right now? If you wanted to stop, all you have to do is leave my brother alone. Whether you do or don't, I won't let you two get married no matter what. If a woman is dating a man 10 years older than she is, she only wants one thing, and it's that man's wallet. Well, 
As Mark's older sister, it's my duty to make sure my little brother doesn't fall for your wiles. So, you want us to break off our engagement to each other then? That way, Mark can find a better girl more suited for his age and who will respect him for the man he is. Well, I don't see how we would ever swing that with a bossy sister like you hanging around him all the time. You'd drive anyone from Mark. Ah, uh, whatever. This thing is dumb. I'm putting my phone down now. Well, Mark, I can't take this anymore. I don't think I can marry you. Thank you for everything up to now. Wait, what? Hillary, hold on. Don't tell me that Brenda was bugging you again. You aren't serious about all of this, are you? I am serious, Mark. I have tried over and over to patch things up with your sister, and she just refuses to listen. But that's not my fault, please. You can't do this to me. Okay, wait. Hold on. Before this gets taken too far, I really was just joking. Of course, I still want to marry you, and what other people say is not going to change that. What, what kind of sick joke is that? You nearly gave me a heart attack. <laughs> I'm sorry. I think I'm just still stressed out from dealing with your sister and the way she treated me when I went over to meet your family. I mean, not only did she actually dump water on me, but then she went on to tell me that she thinks you and I should break off the engagement. But I'm not letting her get to me that easily, so you have nothing to worry about. So then... You still want to marry me. You didn't mean what you said. Of course, I still want to marry you. I just said that. But I really don't like how your sister seems to single me out and won't ever get off my back about the engagement. Except, I also get the sense that she's the type of person that won't stop until she got in what she wants. So what do I think we should do for now is to pretend as if we have broken off our engagement and continue to plan the wedding in secret. That way, on the day of her wedding, Brenda will be blindsided and won't have any room to fight back. Oh, I see what you're getting at now. But isn't that basically like lying to Brenda then? <laughs> well, yes it is. But no one else I know has any reason to object to you and I getting married. It's only Brenda who is making this a huge deal and fighting it tooth and nail. Are you really sure that this plan of yours is going to work? Well, another plan I thought is that we do actually break the engagement, but then I propose to you instead. That way we can tell Brenda that we did break it off, and we just won't tell her that we got engaged again. What do you think about that idea? You mean you really want to propose to me? Where are you going to do it? Have you picked a location already? I'm so excited. <laughs> Sorry, Mark. That was just another joke. These things don't go well over text, do they? Anyways, I just think the best thing to do would be to avoid hanging out with your sister. After all, it's our marriage, so it's our feelings that should matter the most here. Although, I know that no matter what, Brenda is going to hate the fact that we're getting married. You're right. It is about how we feel, Hillary. And the way I feel about you is... Well, you just mean so much to me. I literally can't even put it into words because it still wouldn't be enough to contain all that I feel for you. But I can't just pretend like I don't care a lot about my sister either. No. I'm sorry, Hilary, I just... I don't think that I can go through with this if my sister doesn't want it to happen. Wait, what do you mean? I mean that... that... I'm really sorry, Hilary. I can't do this anymore. I'm going to do what Brenda says and call it all off. You've got to be kidding me, right? Are you seriously breaking up with me? I know it's upsetting. I'm crushed just thinking about it right now. Maybe we could just not get married and not break up. We could just keep dating and stay a couple. Would that really be so bad? What does that even mean? I've tried to talk to you about this before, but you just never seem to think that I was really serious. My sister means the world to me, and she is someone that I have deep respect for. I mean, she's practically raised me ever since I was little and could barely walk. I just owe her so much in my life. Mark, I know that your sister has done a lot for you. I know that she was there by your side when you felt lonely as a kid. I didn't have many friends when I was growing up, but 
I also had Brenda by my side. And when I said that I wanted to start my own business, her and my parents were there to support me. Even when business isn't doing so well, she was there to console me. She even introduced me to someone who became one of my most important clients for my business. I just, I can't take all that and not give back to her somehow. So then, you're really going to roll over and break up with me? When you proposed to me, you said that you wanted to make me the happiest woman in the world. I know, and I meant it. But that was before I knew that my sister would act this way. And people are always telling me to be careful of friendly people who might only be after my money. Needless to say, I'm a little on edge about it. Wait a second. You think that I might just be after you for your money? Ugh, please tell me that you didn't really propose to someone who genuinely were thinking that about. Look, the fact of the matter is that I'm 36 years old, and this is the first time that I've dated someone so much younger than me. The time I've spent with you has been amazing, but I can't help but have some worries in the back of my mind. Maybe I'm still just the scared, unsure kid that I've always been. I don't know. Maybe it's just tough for me to see how anyone could love me for anything but my money. But that's not the case with me, I swear. So, then you're really not just trying to marry for my money. If that's really the case, then you shouldn't mind if we don't get married, isn't that right? If you really don't care about my money at all, then none of this should be a problem for you, don't you think? You really can't be serious about any of this, right? I'm just going to do as my sister says and not marry you, but we can still date and be together forever. Don't you see? I found a loophole that makes it so that everyone wins. Are you kidding me right now? That is one of the stupidest things that I've ever heard. Wait, wh what do you mean? I mean... That you don't want to marry me, but you want to be with me forever? Do you have any idea how insulting that is to hear from someone I've invested so much of myself in? If that's really the best that you can come up with, then maybe we shouldn't be getting married after all. Hillary, you seem really, really upset right now. Oh, I'm way beyond upset. I'm just fed up and sick and tired of this. If that's really what you want, then fine. Let's call off the engagement, but we are going to break up, and I never want to see you again, got it? Wait, are you serious about that? It's like you said, your older sister knows best, so we should just do what she says, right? Well, if that's the case, then I'm out of here. <laughs> I see that Mark was smart enough to listen to his older sister. I heard that you two finally broke up. Just as I said you two should. Ah, that's right, Brenda, you won, it's over. But thanks to you, I can say that I've learned a lot. Like, the fact that Mark wasn't a good match for me anyways. I'm actually glad that things ended before we got married. What did you just say? Do you have any idea where you stand in comparison to my brother? He's glad that he didn't end it up marrying you. He's the one that dodged a bullet with a gold digger like yourself. Well, I guess we just see it differently, don't we? You may be acting cool right now, but it's so obvious you're fuming with rage over missing out on marrying a rich older man. Is that how you think I feel right now? Oh, I know it is, but as long as I'm around, I'm not going to let some pretty young thing try to manipulate my brother. And it's obvious that Mark doesn't know how to pick women, but it's a good thing that I've already found someone for him. You mean that you've already found someone else that you want your brother to get married to? That's right, and in the meantime, I'll be taking on taking care of Mark. After all, ever since when he was little, I've always had to do everything for him. I even helped revive his business through some of my connections, so of course, I know some women who would be perfect for him. But I'm going to put them through rigorous testing to make sure that I find the right one. I am only going to let the perfect candidate by the woman that I allowed to marry my little brother. Hmm, but aren't you worried that Mark's business might fall apart if you do that? What are you talking about now? Besides, I wonder if there are really even are any women who would want to marry Mark if you do all that to them. Setting aside any potential gold diggers in your lineup, who would want to work that hard just to try and date someone? I'll take care of that, but what do you mean about Mark's business? Oh no, never mind. I'm sure things will be fine since you're there for him. And I'm sure you'll find plenty of women willing to run this gauntlet of yours. 
If you do find someone willing to put all in that work, you've probably already found a winner. Now wait just one second. I want you to answer all my questions. What was that you said earlier about Mark's business? What does any of this have to do with the state of how the company is doing? Explain yourself! Well, I didn't say it as any kind of joke or anything, if that's what you're thinking. But I heard from some colleagues who still work for Mark that ever since I left, it's as if the whole atmosphere changed around there, and that people have been quitting in droves ever since then. Wait, hold on a second. You used to work for Mark, but then you quit? I take it if that Mark never told you about any of this then. But yes, Mark and I actually met at his company while I was interning there. But that was while I was in college. After I graduated, I left and began job hunting for myself. I was going to talk about all of this when I came over to meet you and your parents, but then you spoiled the whole scene with your little water stunt. I didn't know any of this at all. Well, it's true. All throughout my sophomore year, I interned at his company. And sure, it's true that I ended up getting my first job there too. But I was so familiar with the system by that point that I was promoted to project manager in no time. And that's when we really first started to date each other. But you two had actually known each other for a long time before that? That's right. But when he told me that we wouldn't be getting married anymore, I took it as my signal to quit. I know that I would never even want to see his face ever again, so I started sending out job applicants and submitted my letter of resignation right away. But I still don't get how any of this affects the state of the company. I mean, I thought everything was going fine business-wise. Why would losing one lousy employee bring the whole thing down? I didn't understand it at first either, but my leaving had quite the impact apparently. It seems that Mark is too indecisive on his own to run a company and that's where I came in. What do you mean that's where you came in? You mean that you're Mark's older sister but you didn't know about this? Well, you know how Mark can be a bit of an introvert, right? But to run a company, you need to inspire and lead your employees. That was just a little too much to ask of Mark and I was the bridge between him and the rest of his business. Are you kidding me right now? Not at all. I told you that I was a project leader, didn't I? I was always the go-between from Mark to the rest of the staff. But now that I'm gone, the bridge isn't there anymore, and everyone realized how incompetent Mark really is. But that can't be right. I mean, you're just one person. There's no way you could have been that important to everything. How could just losing you bring a whole company down? Well, I already said, after I left, people started quitting after me. It wasn't just me, it was everyone that left in my wake as well. Losing a few dozen employees at once is not good for any business. You mean dozens of people have quit already? All because you were gone? That's right, and the reason I left in the first place was because Mark broke off his engagement with me. Anyways, I think rumors about what happened between us started to swirl around the office, and that might have something to do with it as well. What kinds of rumors do you mean? Well, Mark announced to everyone in the office when him and I got engaged, so it's only natural that people would start to wonder about why it was that we broke it off. Some people thought it was about the age. Others thought that his family didn't like me. A lot of different theories started floating around. A lot of people got really hung up on the age thing though, and started to wonder about the role age played in the structure of the company. Since we hired so many young people, they started to think that they were being held back in their careers just because of their age. Soon they were getting fed up working for Mark and they started to quit. But, I mean, that's not even true. True or not, the fact of the matter is that Mark couldn't step in like a leader and quell any of these rumors, and now they've gotten all out of hand. Basically, all of the upper management has already walked out. Now it's the regular employees who are left, and Mark still can't figure out what to do. But by waiting and not acting, he's just making things worse for himself. So then, Mark's company is really falling apart right now? But this can't happen. How am I supposed to get paid if this happens? What do you mean, how are you supposed to get paid? Did you work for Mark too? Of course I do. Mark hired me as a consultant who he can go to for advice. I make a couple thousand bucks a month telling him how he should run his business. Really? I had no idea that 
level of nepotism was going on there. Well, anyways, as the company advisor, I say that you need to get back to work right now. But also, you marrying Mark and you working for him are two different topics. You can't just leave a job because your boss dumped you. <laughs> I'm not going to be taking any advice from the woman whose fault all of this is in the first place. The reason Mark's business is in so much trouble is because of your attitude towards me. I know that Mark thinks of you as someone who helped him get through his childhood, so it makes sense why he would want you helping him run his business, but now you've done this to it. No, no. Those two things are entirely separate. I didn't do any of this, but the company can't go down. I need this job. Well, I've already quit and I'm not coming back. Now, goodbye. Hillary, please, you have to help me. Do you want to get back together with me? Please say yes, I need you. I've always needed you. Uh, what is this all about? I'm so sorry. I should have never just let Brenda ruin our engagement like that. I should have never listened to her and I'm so sorry for everything. But I need you. I can't live without you. It's way too late for any of this, Mark. Besides, I already know about all the business troubles that you're facing right now. Maybe you can go and ask your brilliant sister for some advice how to run your company. Please don't be like that. I'm trying to apologize here. But I've talked to Brenda and even she came around. She says it's fine if we get married now. So please, will you do me the honor of being my wife? Ah, uh, I really can't believe this right now. I know it's been a few weeks since we broke up, but I know that you still must love me deep down, right? I still love you and I need you and I want to be with you. So please come back to me. Come back to work for me. I'll even make you vice president of the whole company if you do. I'm sorry, but not only do I have another job, but I also have another boyfriend. Hold on, what? You already found a new job and a new boyfriend? But how did you move on so quickly? I, I don't get it. Well, think about it. I'm a young, successful businesswoman. Did you really think it would be that hard for me to find someone else who wanted to date me? I'm in the prime of my game right now. Are you kidding me right now? No, not at all. With all the experience I've gotten working at your company, I managed to land a position here where I'm making about $100,000 a year. Not only that, but my boyfriend is also very understanding about how hard I work and is always cheering me on. This is the happiest I've been in a long time. But you move too quickly. You can't just replace me like that. <laughs> Why would I waste time mourning over losing a guy like you? I have to live a life and I don't need you to be a part of it. Tell your sister, I said. Have a nice life. <laughs> After that, it didn't take long before Mark's company had to start filing for bankruptcy as it was unable to recover from losing about half of its workforce. Mark finally had the idea of trying to turn the company in a new direction, but he didn't have anyone who was willing to go along with his ideas anymore. Still, he continued. I hear that now. Mark is drowning in debt and is constantly getting in screaming matches with his sister. <laughs> and to think that the two of them used to be so close. Thank you for watching till the end. If you felt good about this video, like the video. If you didn't like it, let me know why in the comments. Subscribe too. Your likes and subs lead to our motivation. We have so many videos on our channel as well, so go ahead and take a look. See you in the next video.